Hey, it's Chris, Legion of Games. So today we're going to be talking about the prototype copy I got from Ludu Ninja regarding Medieval Carnival, an upcoming game that's going to be launching on GameFound. So what do you need to know about this game? How does it play? What does it look like? And what are you doing as you're trying to navigate this very evil-esque carnival in sort of a just more resource management style of game? Is it right for you? What do you need to know? A few points that may help you figure out whether or not this game is right for you and whether or not you should be backing it on crowdfunding when it comes up. So, that being said, let's do this. Now, this game is a two to four player game, like I mentioned, where you are going to be traveling the outer ring of this board, collecting resources based on the color of skulls as the main resource in order to buy the prizes from the attractions themselves. Three prizes at each location. In order to trigger the end game, a certain number of these locations have to have all of their prizes removed. You are moving your character around the various spots, not in the normal way, but either left or right, or all the way across the board, which is something unusual that we don't see in a typical game where we are usually used to moving in a single direction. And that dynamic gives it a slightly different feel because of, again, how you're going to be able to interact with the spaces on the board, how it's going to cause noise at the board, where it's going to attract the AI, but then also how that's going to change how you're going to go and attempt to use those resources based on the skull resource colors that you're getting in the first place to match them up with the prizes. So first thing you need to know about this game is it's going to take you not only under an hour, but even maybe 45 minutes or less to play this sort of uh, resource management style game. And the interesting aspect of this is the interactions that happen between the players and the game itself. You have two different types of enemies that you are going to be potentially dealing with. And when I say enemies, I use that in the most general, vague sense. Or parts of the game that are going to be interacting with you that are going to have an element that may disrupt your plans. Again... This is going to be, as I mentioned just by the game length alone, more on the filler side of things. This is an easy overhead, easy get to the table, slight asymmetry resource management style game. And so right there, a few of those key words should tell you a little bit of whether or not this is of interest to you. The best element of this game I will put out there is on this circular board that you are traversing the various attractions that are at all of the different locations. And why is that? Because each of these attractions has a slightly different mechanism or power, ability, whatever you want to call it, that is going to force yourself to adapt to what's going on. Now, the movement in this game is also slightly different. We're used to movement where, I mean, you're either moving clockwise, you're moving counterclockwise. Whereas in this game, you are moving adjacent or completely across to the opposite side of the board. There's no in-between. So again, it changes the thought pattern of what you're used to doing and forces you to adapt slightly differently there. Now again, you have two characters for sort of the Gravekeeper-esque and the, the evil black cat, if you will, that are going to be uh, potentially circling the outside and forcing you to, again, change your plans. Because if you land on the space, or if they land on your space, more likely, it disrupts your plan, even to go as far as making you off the board for your turn, only then to come on again when it comes back around to you. It's not that the game is going to be aggressively going against you, but this is potentially more of a player versus player element to manipulate those uh, AI characters, those NPCs, if you will, to hinder or affect your opponent. So therein lies the next point of, is that something you're okay with from a game that is going to potentially do that? Because not only are they a little bit bound to their circumstances, but they each have arrows that will affect which way they are going around the loop or the circle of the board in the first place. So the ability to manipulate that is another layer of, okay, how do I like that? 
The other basic mechanisms of this game are relatively straightforward. Land on a space, land on an attraction, get the colored resources that you need. If you can buy one of the prizes that's there, you acquire it, getting victory points, the most victory points at the end when they are all empty, wins. That is relatively straightforward. The other aspect of things, and I kind of pro-con here, the attractions themselves, like I mentioned, there are well more than the amount of spaces on the board in the first place. And so then offers increased replayability, increased dynamic changes from game to game. The biggest downside was when I played it, I just didn't get to see enough of them because the main mechanism in which they're coming out is when the grave digger lands on the same one that you are on, which causes the attraction to then be jettisoned and to get a new one then. And so if I'm going to have chaos, if I'm going to have some take that, I almost wish it was embraced more. Um, you know, just the potential for it to happen more because in my plays, it just didn't happen as much as, and as weird as that sounds, I almost want more, right? If you're going to give me a take that game, fully embrace it because it's there. Otherwise, it's sort of, uh, more akin to the fly buzzing or the mosquito buzzing around your head, you know? Occasionally it's an annoyance, but it's not a huge threat to you in the first place. And, I mean, I think that's what they're going for, is that it's not a full-on threat that you're trying to deal with, but, you know, I, I look at it almost in these games as do not do lukewarm. Do hot, do cold, do one extreme or the other, but a little bit of it is going to potentially turn off the people that don't want any of it, and it may not have enough for the people that want it. And so that's where the cat, the flea bag, cat, black cat mechanism, adds a little bit more. And, and now they have that as a variant that you could include the cat as well, but I would argue that I would probably not want to play without it because it adds more of that in a better, in a good way when the gravedigger alone is just not enough for me. So the variant becomes actually more of the preferred option in my preference. One thing that is either going to, again, be an attraction or potentially even a turnoff from the gameplay is you're drawing tokens on a turn-by-turn -turn basis from this bag until it's out and then you replenish them. And as you're drawing them, you know, you may get one that's slightly helpful. You may get one that's, you know, not helpful at all. It just depends on what's left there. And it's pure randomness because some of them are drastically different than others. And again, how do you feel about that? They're not make it or break it, but again, it's another small element of things that you're either going to be a fan of or is going to be more of a turnoff. So what do I think of this game overall? Where does it fall? What do I think people are going to like? What do I think people are going to potentially not like? As I've already mentioned, one, this is a light easy resource management style game for two to four players. It's going to be more chaotic at the three and four player count. I think it's arguably going to be more fun at the three or four player count because a two player game like this is going to be very dr dry in the sense that there is not going to be as much interaction. There is not going to be as much uh, potential chaos that I crave from a game like this in the first place. But... Again, that may be a turn on for other people who want less of that. Again, who's not going to like this game? I would argue that, I mean, if you're not looking for take that, if you're looking for less interaction, less chaos, more ways to control your own destiny, I mean, this isn't going to appeal to you. But the lower barrier to entry and the ease of accessibility is also going to open doors that, I mean, I've played games that are more intense than this. I've played games that are longer than this. And sometimes you just don't feel like that. Is it the best game I've played? No, it's not. Is it fun for what it is? It is. This game is not taking things you have not seen. It is not creating new things. It is not, you know, giving you a brand new experience. It is offering a twist, a difference in terms of what is out there in a slightly different manner. I wish that the victory point conditions were slightly different because I mean, I think there's three, you know, victory points on the cards. It's three, five or eight, you know, so something a little bit varied there. 
Again, I almost wish there was one or two more different colored resources as well, just to give it a little bit more optimization. But again, that would probably take away from the ease and the accessibility and the uh, you know overall attraction if you're looking for something lighter. If you're looking for something akin to a Splendor, something along those lines, this is that niche that it fills in a slightly different way. And if you're okay with that, then this is good. Now, again, if that doesn't attract you, if those things don't sound good, nothing in this game is going to change your mind either. It is what it is. It's not trying to be a Euro pure information style game. And I think fully embracing the fact that it is not would make it better, like I said, with the flea bag variant, which offers just more of that present on a game by game basis without increasing the overhead significantly. So those are my thoughts on Medieval Carnival. Ludo Ninja coming on GameFound. If you have any questions, you have any thoughts, you have any concerns, let me know. Happy to answer them in the comment section as always, but thank you for watching in the first place. Like, comment, subscribe, smash that button. Uh, just let me know what you think. Thank you, Luda Ninja, sending me the Prototap copy so I can talk about it for you guys in the first place. Stay classy. Have a great day. Play some games. Have some fun. Or just have some fun in general. It doesn't have to be playing games, but do you. See you around.